Hello friends, welcome to Freshers Live. Today is 3rd April. Here I will discuss all the important questions that may be asked from today's current affairs and important facts related with each question. So, watch the video very carefully and try to answer the questions asked at the end of the video. You can download the PDF of the video from the link provided in the description. You can also download the PDF from our website as well as Telegram groups. Also, you can find the link for the Hindi version of this video in the below given description box. The link for Hindi current affairs is given there. Okay friends, let's move towards the first question for today. Who became the first Indian male squash player to enter the list of top 10 in the latest PSA World Rankings? And the answer is... E. Saurav Ghosal Let's learn something more about Saurav Ghosal. Saurav Ghosal became the first Indian male squash player to enter the top 10 in the PSA, Professional Squash Association World Rankings. He has moved up two places to a career high ranking of 10th and is currently the only Asian in the top 10. Gosal made it to the quarterfinals of the 2018 to 2019 PSA World Championships in Chicago, USA for the first time in his career. He was also a quarterfinalist at the prestigious Grasshopper Cup in Zurich, Switzerland. Moving towards our second question for today, which bank has become first lender to charge for UPI use? And the correct answer is Option A, Kotak Mahindra Bank. Let's get more information on this. Kotak Mahindra Bank, also called Kotak, has announced that it is to charge customers for UPI transactions starting 1st of May 2019. For each Kotak Bank account, the first 30 UPI fund transfers will be free, after which a charge will be levied on all fund transfers from the bank account. This will be applicable across all platforms, including Paytm, PhonePay, Google Pay or TrueCaller Pay, among others. The bank will charge Rs 2.5 per transaction for an amount value below or equal to Rs 1000, and Rs 5 per transaction will be levied for a payment value above Rs 1000. Let's have a look about Kotak Mahindra Bank. Kotak Mahindra Bank headquarters is in Mumbai. Its founder is Uday Kotak. Its subsidiaries are Kotak Securities, Kotak Life Insurance and more. Its vice presidents are Mr. Abhishek Bisson and Mr. Deepak Agarwal. Friends, let's move towards our third question for today. Which state tops in e-learning training for field staff? And the correct answer is a. Telangana. Telangana ranks number one in the e-learning training program of the Department of Personal and Training, Government of India. During the financial year 2018-19, Dr. MCR HRD Institute enrolled over 20,000 field staff in different districts of the state to impart training on 12 soft skill modules and three domain specific modules on RTI, office procedures and finance and AMP accounts apart from sustainable development goals. Let's see about Telangana. Telangana was founded on 2nd June 2014. Mr. K. Chandrasekhar Rao is its chief minister. ESL Narasimhan is the governor and its capital is Hyderabad. Let's move towards the fourth question for today. Which of the following country is to increase sugar, rice and bovine imports from India? And the correct option is D. Indonesia. Indonesia is looking at increasing sugar, rice and bovine imports from India. Council General of Indonesia, Ade Sukandar, said that India exported about 50,000 tons of rice in 2018. It is looking at importing more non-Basmati rice from India. There was potential to import over 1 lakh tons a year. Negotiations are on between the two countries to increase imports. Total exports from Indonesia to India in 2018 were to the tune of $13.72 billion and exports from India were to the tune of $5.01 billion. Let's learn about Indonesia. Indonesia president is Joko Widodo. Jews of Kala is its vice president. Capital of Indonesia is Jakarta and the official or national language spoken is Indonesia. Currency is Indonesian Rupaya. Friends, let's move towards our fifth question. Comcasa is India's military information sharing pact with? And the answer is 
B. United States. Let's learn about COMCASA. COMCASA, Communications Compatibility and Security Agreement. It is the Indo-US Military Information Sharing Pact and was signed at the 2 plus 2 bilateral summit on 6 September 2018. Recently, India and the US have set up the first ever secure communication link between the Indian Navy and US Central as well as Pacific Naval Commands under the COMCASA Pact at New Delhi, India. COMCASA is one of the three foundation agreements that need to be signed by a country with the United States to share high-end encrypted communication and satellite data. The other two pacts are LEMOVA, Logistics Exchange Memorandum of Agreement, and BECA, Basic Exchange and Cooperation Agreement. Friends, let's move towards our sixth question. Who won the John Dirks Canada Gairdner Global Health Award? And the correct answer is... Option B, Vikram Patel. Let's learn about Vikram Patel. Vikram Patel, a psychiatric and professor of global health at Harvard Medical School, has won the prestigious John Dirks Canada Gaidner Global Health Award. Mr. Patel has led research generating knowledge on the burden and detriments of mental health problems in low and middle income countries and pioneered approaches which utilize community resources for the prevention and treatment of mental health problems in India with global impact. Laureates received a $100,000 cash honorarium and will be formally presented with their awards on October 24th, 2019 at the annual Canada Gaidner Awards Gala in Toronto. Let's learn about Canada Gaidner Global Health Award. The John Dirks Canada Gaidner Global Health Award recognizes the world's top scientists who have made outstanding achievements in global health research. Since its inception, the Global Health Award has grown significantly to become one of the world's most prestigious awards recognizing excellence in global health research. Let's have a look at the seventh question for today. With which of the following country did India sign MOU for the development and industrial use of lithium? And the correct option is... Option B, Bolivia. Let's get more information on this. India and Bolivia have signed an agreement for the development and industrial use of lithium during the state visit of the President Ram Nath Govind to Bolivia. Lithium is a prime component used to power electric vehicles and cell phones. India and Bolivia agreed to forge a mutually beneficial partnership to facilitate Bolivian supplies of lithium carbonate to India. The country also plan to foster joint ventures for lithium battery or cell production plants in India. This agreement will make Bolivia one of the major provider of metal for India's e-mobility and e-storage needs. Bolivia is known to have one-fourth of the world's lithium reserves. The agreement facilitates mechanisms for the commercialization of lithium carbonate and potassium chloride produced in Bolivia by Yasimiantos de Lithio Bolivianos Corporation. Let's learn about Bolivia. Bolivia's president is Evo Morales. Alvaro Gracia Linera is its vice president. Sucre is its constitutional capital. And La Paz is its seat of government. Boliviano is the currency. Let's move to our eighth question for today. GST has given a record high collection of Dash in the month of March. And the correct answer is... Option C, rupees 1.06 trillion. Let's learn more about this. The finance ministry said that GST collections has scaled to a record high of rupees 1,6577 crore in March. The revenue collection was rupees 97,247 crore in the month of February. The record revenue collection was attributed to increased compliance and increase in the number of returns filed. Total gross GST revenue collected in March 2019 stood at rupees 1,6577 crore of which central GST is rupees 20,353 crore. State GST is rupees 27,520 crore. Integrated GST is rupees 50,418 crore and CES is rupees 8,286 crore. The number of summary sales returns GST TR3B file for the month of February up to March 31st stood at 
7.59 million. The monthly average of GST revenue during 2018 to 19 stood at rupees 98,114 crore, which is 9.2 percent higher than the previous fiscal. You can have a look at the GST collections for the year 2018 to 19 on the screen. To conclude this session, here comes the question of the day. What does COMCASA stand for? Try to answer the question and drop your answers in the comment box. Okay friends, that's for today. Thanks for watching our video. If you find information provided in our video useful, please do like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel. Follow us regularly to stay updated on current affairs. Until then, this is Freshers Life signing out from Current Affairs Video. Take care.